Hey everyone, I'm Beverly from Down in Creative Studios and today's project is painting the Baby Yoda pod that I made for Silicon Comic Con. Now I made this really cute pod for Silicon with Adam Savage. We did a workshop a little while ago and in that workshop we assembled this pod using pattern that I made and um, EVA foam from TNT Cosplay Supply. And today I have been able to finally set aside some time to paint it with the plaid effects paints that came with your kits. Now these paints are absolutely amazing. They're perfect for EVA foam craft foam because they are flexible and the coverage is amazing. So uh, I'm gonna be using those paints for this tutorial. So if you'd like to make one of your own pods, you can do that by downloading the files over on my website. You can also find Cricut files on my website. And you can also find the files for free and the build video that I did for Silicon um, over on their website, which is siliconsj.com. And um, I'll put a link in the show notes so that you can access that build video because that is the only place where you will find those instructions. For supplies, you are going to need your finished Baby Yoda pod, your paints, whatever paint brushes you have nearby, a popsicle stick, and probably if you're like me, I like to make a little bit of a mess, so grab some paper towels. Oh, and also, if you have a the heat gun handy that came in your kit, you're gonna wanna have that on hand as well. So go ahead and grab that, get that plugged in. So before we start painting, I'm gonna seal the foam with my heat gun. And what that does is it closes up the cells, the surface of the foam, it closes those cells up and makes it a smoother surface, a little easier to paint, a little better finish. So you might notice that um, your foam might be a little bit flat. What you can do to fix that is while the foam is warm, you can just kind of manipulate the foam into whatever whatever shape you want. I'm gonna do a base white with a little bit of black mixed in to make it a kind of a gray, um, but a very faint gray. So let's get some white. Okay, I have way too much paint here but I'm just gonna go with it. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna just paint the whole thing. I'll use this brush. This one's fine. So when you paint with this, this paint, you wanna kinda move your brush back and forth. The foam cells, you'll see them fill up with paint. That's what you want. It's gonna look great. So I'm putting two layers on this because I realized one layer probably wasn't enough. I was still seeing part of the texture of the foam underneath, so just add a second layer if you need to. I used a dryer to help dry this a little bit faster. Um, if you use a dryer, just put it on the cool setting if you have a cool setting. You definitely don't want to use a hot dryer on this because you could ruin the surface. All right, we have our first layer and second layer of uh, very light gray. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this uh, orange. Again, this is their orbital orange. This is a matte color from the FX paints. So for this detail down in the bottom here, I just kind of drew a, a shape on there and uh, now I'm gonna mask it off with some tape. All right, those are all masked off on both sides. Now I'm gonna go in and very gently paint those orange. All right, so now I think I'm gonna go in and uh, do another layer, maybe a little bit darker. All 
Okay, so now that we have our orange on the inside and um, on the outside and these little details down on this side here, um, I'm gonna start mixing some darker color, probably a mix of orange and black and then some of the gray that I had left over to make a darker color for this inside part. So again, if you were painting this before assembling, that would make this a little bit easier. You wouldn't have to like reach reach in with your brush, but this is gonna work just fine. I think I'm gonna make this darker. I'm gonna make it more of a gray. Okay, that is a little bit darker. The next thing that I'm gonna do is carefully peel off this tape. So I'm going to be using a technique called dry brushing. Um, and what that means is that you just put a little bit of paint on your brush directly. Don't dilute it with uh, water. Blot some of that off with a paper towel and then get your brush in there and just sort of wave it around. What I'm imagining is that these pieces, this, this metal piece has definitely seen some action, right? Like it's and hanging out in space for a while. Nobody's cleaned it. it. Definitely has grime in some areas. This part is the most fun, I think. Now, if you put too much on there and you don't like it, like I'm not sure about that, what you can do is take a little um, paper towel I rub that down. Hmm, that's pretty subtle, but I like it. It's not overly done. I think that when I did this one, um, I was, I mean, there's a lot of damage on here. This is like the really super well-worn one. This one hasn't seen that much action yet. So uh, let's keep going. So I will say that as with everything, with painting and with cosplay and with making in general, there's more than one way to, to paint uh, a chipped paint technique on anything. One method is you use latex and you have a, a darker layer and you put latex on top, you let that dry and then you wash a lighter layer on top of that or whatever you would like the under the under color to be under the chip. Um, the latex cures and nothing sticks to the latex so when you wipe off the latex the paint underneath reveals itself and that is a really good way to um, to get the, the paint chip technique but some people are allergic to latex so um, I didn't want to use latex for this one. Another technique that some people use is using toothpaste which um, is you know if you have toothpaste in the house go ahead and give this a, give that a try um, and let me know how that comes out. But for today, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use popsicle stick and I'm gonna show you how I use that to make some of these details that I think came out, came out pretty great. So I'm gonna do that for this. So I have a little bit of paint on the tip of this, but I'm really just depositing a bunch of paint all at once in kind of a random pattern. Now you can also do this with a paintbrush if you don't have a popsicle stick. You do you. Also add some some scrapes like uh, Let's say this thing is opened one, one or two too many times. I 
Okay, I am so happy with the way that this came out. I really hope that you picked up a few tips and techniques that you can use on your own Baby Yoda pod or whatever uh, prop or costume that you're making that could use a little bit of weathering and some paint chipping. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, if you have any questions, let me know and I'd be happy to help. See you next time.